Hello everyone. In this video we're going to be creating a shape data class that will be used to store all of the basic things about each of the Tetris shapes, such as the different states they can be in, like every rotation, uh, a color, the default state that we want them to be in when they appear on the screen, and a name. And then Depending on the time, either in this video or the next one, we'll get into actually making a shape class that will use those. So let's go ahead and create our new class called Shape Data. And each shape has four different rotation states. And the easiest way to represent those is just going to be a 4x4 four four array of bools. So our rotation states will be uh, just like that. We'll so have four four by four arrays, and we're going to load those from a file. And then we'll have a name and a default state for them. And the color that we want them to use, which I think should just be an index. Yeah, it should just be a color index. So now let's make a constructor for shape data. And in here, we're going to want to pass in uh, four different rotation states. And we'll just uh, populate our array with those. And then the default state and the color index and the name. So actually, let's just do it this way. Make the constructor simple. And then a little trick that I learned that's going to make defining these a little bit easier is if we do more shape datas. And we just call this set rotation states. We can do uh, all of our rotation state stuff in here. And return this. So this basically just acts like an extra constructor, but it keeps some of the, the work out of here. So let's just fill in these fields. And let's fill in these as well. All right, now we need to actually load these shapes from something. So actually, yeah, if we're going to be loading the shapes, let's let's scrap this and let's just throw in a file name in here instead. And we will load the rotation states from that file name. So in our res folder, if we navigate to that, well, that's not going to work. If I open this in Explorer. Right, let me just navigate to that book.
So this is our res folder right now. We want to add seven more files because there's seven different Tetris shapes. And here's our, our reference for the different shapes. We go ahead and we'll just name them all the name of their shape. So this is line, uh, it's just three, four, five, six, seven. Now this one is square. This one can be L shape, J shape, T, Z shape, and S shape. And then in each of these files, we'll basically just copy these 4x4 four four grids for what their rotation state should be. So for line, for example, our file should just look like this. And then on the next line, we'll do the next state. And the next state. And the last state. So obviously filling out these files is going to take a little bit of time. So I'm going to cut the video here. And I'll come back when I've done this for all of them. And I'll link this picture that I'm using as a reference down in the description. All right, so I finished filling out the shapes, as you can see. T-shape looks like this. And one quick way to check that all of them are filled out correctly is to go through and make sure that they are all the same number of bytes. And all of my files are 94 bytes, so that means I've done it correctly. So now let's actually load our rotation states from this shape data in our, uh, in our class. So the easiest way to do this is uh, one really easy way to do file IO is to just do a scanner. So we're going to do that. And obviously you want to close it. And this needs to be a new file. So this is going to have exceptions, or could have IO exceptions, so we'll just surround it all in a try catch. Uh, so if the file happens not be found, we'll just print out the error and say that file did not exist. Shape name not correct. Now we'll just do a loop through the whole file to fill out the rotation states. So we need to do this four times. And we'll just have a temporary boolean here to fill out the states. And booleans will default their values to false, so we don't need to worry about setting those to false. So this will be for each one of these. Uh, we want to get that line, so string line equals s dot next line. And then we need to fill out our array. So actually, we don't need this temp thing at all.
Um, this will just be line uh, char at k equals zero equals one. So as long as there's only zeros and ones in our thing, any one will mark that as a state, as a um, as a position that needs to be maintained. And anything else will say there is not a block at that spot. And then just for test purposes, let's go ahead and print that out to make sure that gets represented right. And we'll do a new line after this. So now let's go ahead and define one of these things and see if it loads correctly. This is going to be line.txt, line, the default state, we're basing it off this. I'm going to want the default state to be 1, and what is our last one, the color index? So if we look at our colors, let's just say that lines are blue. It's, it doesn't really make much of a difference what they are. So we'll just say lines are blue, so that would be zero. So now I think if we just run this, that we're actually going to need to call this so that it knows it needs to initialize that. So over in our Tetris main, we'll just throw a reference to that under init or something. Equals shape data dot line. Now, if we do that, we'll see we get an error. That's, that's fine. Um, because this needs to be slash. That's still incorrect. I think what we're actually going to need to do. From here, we need to do shape data dot class dot get source. Um. Oh, let me let me rewrite this. All right, shape data class get resource as stream and this will be the file name and then I think we can do a new scanner off of this yeah we can use an input stream now if we run that oh there's an error um, Is this no longer a problem? Let's see if this right, this no longer has has a necessity for a try catch statement. So we'll go ahead and remove that. And now we're getting more errors here. So let's actually refresh this folder so that it knows about those being there. And let's try putting the slash back. There we go. So now as we can see, let's let's just verify that this is done correctly. The first one 
Uh, let me pull up this just so we can verify it. So the first one is false, true, false, false, 0, 1, 0, 0. And that is true for the whole first four. And then everything else seems to be also correct. So let's go ahead and define the rest of our shapes. And we can remove this debug because we know it works. So we'll just copy this. There are seven different shapes, so we need this seven times. And let's just do square next. The squares don't really matter what state they're in. We'll have them be color one. Just fill out all these colors. Let's do a L shape next, then a J shape. Then the T, then the Z shape, and finally the S shape. And we just need to fill out these. Line square L shape J shape T Z shape S shape and then just for the default states for the L shape I want one for the J shape I want three for the T I want zero and for Z shape and S shape, I want one. This is just based on what I'm deciding. So the line's going to start like this. The square doesn't matter how it starts. L shapes will start like this. J shapes will start like this. The T will start like this. And the S and Z shapes will start like this. And if you want them to be different for whatever reason, you can do that too. But this is just how I'm going to go ahead and do that. So just to make sure that there's no errors in any of this, let's go ahead and duplicate this statement. L shape. Actually, what if we just throw a print statement at the end of this that says it was successfully loaded? Tetris shape name successfully loaded from this file name. So this might actually just load all of them. Let's go ahead and see if it does that. Yep, you can see all of our shapes successfully loaded. There are no errors. So that's going to be it for this tutorial. And in the next one, we're going to make a shape class that actually uses this data to have a shape. And then we'll use it to move through our Tetris grid. Thank you for watching. If you want to see more videos like this, then subscribe to the channel. And if you like this video, please give it a like. Thank you.